Hello folks, we are back at Oscan Industries, Duncan and Guelph. He used to have a lot of RX-7s here, scattered all over the place. Look at this, they're all tidied up. Let's check them out. We've got some F, what are they, FBs, FCs. Lots of parks for you guys. Look at this, all nice and laid out, like a proper scrapyard. Just bring your tools and a fat wallet and get all the parts you need. Talking of parts, Duncan gave me a couple of items for the 7R7 project. Cheapest chips, in fact, practically free. Let me show you what I got. If C turbo starter motor and an alternator. Don't he said that's not necessarily a turbo alternator, but because I'm putting it into a kind of race car, I won't need the higher powered alternator that you're supposed to fit to the to the FC turbo. Also, big bag of nuts and bolts to mount my gearbox to the engine, which is what we're doing next. So be sure to check out Duncan at Ozcan Industries, looks like that. For all your RX-7 and rotary needs, he does ship worldwide, so don't be worried about getting your parts, no problem at all there. Okay, let's begin. Now, because my wife's car lives in the garage at night, it means that my project car does become a bit of a shelving unit every day when I'm done working on it. So I need to remove all of this off the car and I'm going to bring it out to about here. I also need to get my engine hoist out and ready. Back in a minute. That's better. Right, let me walk you through the plan. I want to connect my gearbox to my engine. Once that's connected, then I'll be able to align exactly where the engine and transmission is going. This is pretty much where I want the gearbox to go with the gear stick coming out. Roughly there. I don't want it away up there, I want it there. So once I've got the front to the back position sorted, then I can obviously work out how I'm going to centre it. Well, I'm going to centre it, right? But the weird thing about this particular engine is the engine mounts are different on either side. One side you've got this set up, but on the other side, it's a weird thing down there. It's very strange. Not sure why it's not symmetrical, but hey, we can sort that out. Main thing is to get it connected, get it centered, and get it spaced properly at the back. Once I decide on the position and it's going, then I can work out the angle it's going. So step one will be get the hoist over and get some sort of straps sorted out to lift that up, because I'll probably need to take those mounts off before I even try and center it because it's going to, these things are going to interfere with likes of that, which will be getting cut off anyway, but hey, <sighs> one step at a time. Hoist is in position. I went ahead and removed all the ancillaries and the vac pipes and the wiring loom and all the connectors because you know they would just snap as soon as you put a hoist strap near it. So we're ready to lift it out. So I'm going to take it out and drop it over there see what's going on underneath, see if I can get these mounts off and then probably cut off that supposed engine mount down there. I might end up using it, you never know, but at the moment it's just going to get in the way. And then I'll get the gearbox out and take off its mounts as well because they're not going to work. Right, hoisty time.
Right, let's have a look at my motor. Isn't it tiny? Just for comparison, there's my hand. It's pretty small. So, driver's side engine mount. Passenger side engine mount, completely different in every, every way. That's obviously steel, that's aluminum. This one sticks out half a mile. This one's quite flush. But I think the angle there and the angle there is the same. But if you look back here, the center would be a bit there. So it doesn't line up with, with that. But I think it's because it's got this big, huge turbo on the left. So it has to balance the weight about there, which is roughly in line with the water pump. Anyway, I'll look into that before I make any, any mounts on the actual frame. But that would make sense because that is quite a lot of extra weight. Okay, I will think about that. Meanwhile, I'm going to take my transmission out and get the mounts off of that as well. As you can see, it's a fairly straightforward mount down there, except my feet are going to be here. So I need to make a shorter mount that way a bit. Again, this is not symmetrical. That one slopes up there, that one goes flat. I'm sure Mazda had a, you know, a great plan for all this, but I'm going to have to modify. Right, let me get that out. I'm going to lower that down. I don't like engines hanging off of uh, hoists for, for longer than necessary. So I'll get that down. And then once all that mount stuff is off, I'll make them together because I'd like to be able to get the whole thing in in a winner rather than constantly having to take things apart to lift them out individually. I need to show you something kind of crazy. So this is the passenger side engine mount. And as you can see, it bolts at the edge of the oil pan and right through the middle of the oil pan. Isn't that just insane? So if you ever wanted to change your sump gasket, you would need to lift the engine up take this mount completely off. I don't even know if you would be able to do that without removing the whole engine. That's nuts. Okay, where are we? I removed this transmission mount, which is, again, a really weird shape. That sits in there, <laughs> like so. So we have rubber mount there, rubber mount there, and this bolt actually went through the middle there, which used to be rubber, but it's all fallen apart. It's the center of it there. So if I'm going to reuse any of that, I'd need to get a new center mount for that. But as it is, I'll be able to put this in there, see where it's all going to line up. And I removed the little one that was attached to here and put it somewhere safe. Never to be seen again. Oh, there it's there. I don't actually know what this, what that did. So I may reuse that, I'm not sure yet. Okay, I am not going to remove those engine mounts. I'm going to adapt them to fit in there. So I'm going to chop this bit off and then finally get this mated to that and see if we can wangle it in. Yeah, I'll cut that off. I also want to cut that off. It's just going to get in the way. Okay, back in a jiff. Right, we're ready to join these two in holy matrimony, but as everyone knows, it is a legal requirement. Anytime you touch a gearbox is you must spill gearbox oil on the floor. As I say, it is the law, and I don't want to risk getting a fine. So there we go. That part's done. Right. Oh, also, I've laid out my very odd-shaped bolts, all different sizes. One there, one there, one there, uh, one down the bottom there, and one there. And as I say, all different sizes. And I got these from Duncan, Oscan Industries. Thanks very much, Duncan. Let's see if they work.
Lovely. Now, I'm going to relocate this strap round to about here. I don't think the bear housing goes any deeper in to the frame than about there. And I just want a bit more of an even spread because I'm going to have to angle it up like that to get it in and then straight. Let's give it a shot. We are in the right sort of area. There's a couple of issues, but there's also a couple of plus sides as well. Okay, as you can see, we are sloping quite severely down that way. And I don't want to drop the front any further. The bottom of the oil pan is already level with this here. I don't want it sticking any lower than that because I want to basically seal off the entire underside of this floor or a skid plate or something under there. I don't want the sump hanging below. So the only option is to raise that side up, which isn't too big of a deal because all I actually have to do is, you see this bar here? The underside of this uh, shifter is assembly is sitting there. So if I remove this and basically move this up to here, because that's obviously a, a bar that joins everything together, but I can move it up to here and that'll allow that to come up a bit and level things off. While we're in this area, you notice how skinny my gearbox is? All this space here, well not all this space because I still have to fit the starter motor, but I do have about two inches that I could move this over for my feet. One of the biggest gripes of building this sort of car is if it's a manual, you've got three pedals. And most people have got size 10 or above feet, which is kind of hard to fit three, not three feet, but you know what I mean, three pedals in there. So even two inches that way would be awesome, both me and the passenger. So that's what I'm thinking of. Centering wise, we're pretty much right in the middle uh, it's a little bit twisted that way, so if I rotate it around this way, this engine mount here will be about that close to this bar here, so I can make some sort of mount from here to here, and it's pretty much the same on the other side. For now, I'm going to stick a big bar under here so that the, the engine can drop down and be supported in the frame, so I can take it off of the hoist. Kind of self-centered. <laughs> that looks pretty good. to two inches between that wall and that wall so the center should be 16 16 to that just needs to go that way about quarter inch
perfectly centered. Excellent. So now I can decide where my mounts are going to go and how I'm going to make them. I think I'm going to have to start with some sort of rubber engine mount bush. I think I can get a pair down at Princess Auto. It's basically a big rubber bush with a bolt coming out each side so it's insulated. Kind of like a transmission mount for a TH350. I'm just going to throw the starter motor on, see how much legroom I can increase by. Oh, another awesome part from Oscan Industries. I know like it sounds like I'm plugging them a lot today, but where else would I get a starter motor for an RX7 30B FC turbo? Nowhere. Thanks, Duncan. Let's see how much space that has taken up. It's taken up pretty much all of that area, but only needs to come to there, right? So I could box that over that way a bit. Give me an extra two inches from there. Bear in mind, the pedal box hinges will be a bit there. The pedals themselves are going to be a bit there. So I could definitely gain a little bit of space there. Excellent. Shifter is coming up exactly where I want it. And as I say, I just need to chop this out, make a new bar going across there to strengthen that. I might even change the angle of these. If I'm gaining room down there, then this doesn't need to come away over here. It could go to there. Lots of potential. And I did get one more thing from Duncan last weekend. He gave me, I mean gave me, an alternator. However, I have no idea where it goes. The one that he's, he has the, um, like the FC's non-turbos. I noticed the alternator was sitting up here. I just don't know. Got a feeling it lives down here somewhere. If anyone knows where the alternator goes on an FC Turbo 2, leave a comment. Well, I suppose I better go plan some engine mounts, go buy some rubber boingy things and buy some steel because we're going to have to do a bit of fabrication to make these mounts especially the one for the the transmission it's going to have to stretch across a whole span of that far anyway thanks for watching thanks for your support thanks to all my new patrons very much appreciated bye